Welcome back to my channel. I'd like to thank everybody that has subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate that. Thank you for helping me build my channel. And if you'd like to subscribe and help me build my channel, I'd appreciate that too. In this video, as you can see on the thumbnail, I did a casting of a Bentley, uh, Bentley logo. It kind of looks like a hood ornament. And so anyway, this one is going to be more challenging. I try and up the challenges a little bit when I cast. You can see there's a lot more detail on this, on this pattern than I normally have. The major difference between this pattern and a lot of the other patterns I do is the thickness. This one's getting pretty thin, so it's going to be challenging. But in the video, this came out really good. So in most of my videos, I have a failure analysis towards the end of it, talk about like what could have been done better. This one came out really good, so there's not going to be much of a failure analysis on it. Plus, the other thing I decided to do was as I cast, as I go through the preparations for casting, I'm going to explain what I've done and what I've learned to get a casting as good as this one, how it's going to come off. So go ahead and stick with me and let's start it. For my pattern, I'm going to use talcum powder. And I mean talcum powder is in real talcum powder, which is hydrated magnesium silicate, not baby powder, which is cornstarch. At my job, I work with a material engineer. He told me that the talcum powder is more like a lubricant. And I looked it up, and sure enough, it has sheets. It forms sheets just like graphene. So it's an actual lubricant that has sheets that slide on each other. And this allows it to slide out of the sand without damaging it. So, you know, the little bit gets on the sand, a little bit gets on the part, and it's able to slide off of each other a little bit better. The baby powder, on the other hand, is chains. And it also picks up a little bit of water out of the air, so it kind of clumps. It does a lot more clumping than it does to actually keep the sand off the pattern. So there is a difference, and in my opinion, the talcum powder works a lot better. The only problem is it's uh, hazardous to your lungs. As you can see there, I'm putting baby powder on for the parting powder, because anything I need, like parting powder or the powder so the sand won't stick to the board, I go ahead and just use uh, baby powder. It's sufficient for that and it's not an inhalation hazard. The talcum powder I'll always apply with a makeup brush so it doesn't get dust into the air. When I cut the basin, I just try and cut a large enough one that it's fairly easy to pour aluminum out of a crucible in. And then I just make a little tiny bump over to the sprue. That way it, it feels really good and has no problems. One of my viewers recommended using a compressed air gun or at least some type of air to blow out the mold. And I'll tell you, that's where a lot of pitting comes from. If you don't get the sand out of the mold, it will actually go into your casting and fall to the bottom and ruin the face of your casting with little tiny pits. That's where mine usually had come from. At this point, I'm going to put several gates off the runner. And the reason why is my pattern is pretty thin and I was worried about it filling up fast enough before the aluminum was able to solidify. Um, the longer you run the aluminum, the more it's going to cool off, and especially when it's thin, you're probably going to get it solidified before it gets all the way to the end. So I'm putting three gates in there off the runner to hopefully help out. Um, in my other video, the Five Finger Death Punch video, I ended up doing a short fill because I decided to cast a, one of my F-bombs with the Five Finger Death Punch logo, and the aluminum didn't fill out the F-bomb all the way, and I came up with a short fill, and the fins didn't quite turn out on it. So that uh, encouraged me to make more gates off the runner to help thin parts. The other thing too is I think the wings are going to, the wing tips are going to be the last to be filled. So I'm going to put the um, air vents there. So as the aluminum fills the mold up of the Bentley logo, um, it'll go all the way to the wings and that's hopefully where the last bit of the air will be and it will go ahead and escape out from there. So this made me really happy. You can actually see the Bentley logo in the sand, and that is near perfect. It came out really well. Man, that talcum powder, I, I think it really helps so the sand doesn't stick to my parts, and I can get a really, really good surface finish on it. 
I'm just presenting the aluminum that I'm using to melt down. It's the previous parts and castings, and I'm also adding hard drive aluminum to it, which is what I mainly use. The aluminum that they use for uh, casting hard drives out of has a good silicon content, and it really flows well. The melt furnace I purchased was from Amazon. Um, it was a good furnace for me to start with. I definitely understand now what I need for a better furnace. Just to point some issues out that if anybody looked for a furnace, the torch is positioned in the center, which is a no-no. You want your actual torch kind of offset so it makes a nice swirl around the inside of it and keep your flame around your crucible. Also, you can tell it's a little oxygen starved because while it has the propane on, you can see it also burn out the top. And if you're burning propane on the outside of your forge or your, or your melting forge, you're, you're not getting the best efficiency you possibly could out of it. The reason why the furnace is making puffing sounds here is because I turned the propane extremely low so I could get closer to it and add more aluminum in. It normally sounds a little better than this, but like I said, I turned the propane extremely low just to keep it on so I can add more aluminum to the crucible. When I take the crucible out of the furnace, you can see how bright orange it is. Go ahead and keep watching it. You'll see the actual color fade down. And I take the temperature and I do the pouring temperature at about 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. So it, it is quite a bit above 1400 degrees Fahrenheit right now because I actually have to wait for it to drop in temperature before I pour it. Um, my previous aluminum castings, I went ahead and did above 1400, but this one I think I wanted to do closer to 1400, even though you can pour between 1300 and 1400, just because the part was thin and I wanted enough heat in there that the aluminum would flow out to all the thin wings of the Bentley logo. And that one came out almost looking like a die cast. Look how shiny that is. That's not going to take hardly any cleanup at all. Most of the cleanup is going to be on the gates, just cutting the gates off and cutting the little air vents off the tips of the wings. But, um, man, that is that came out great. Just shiny and everything. Probably just a little bit of buffing on the buffing wheel and a little bit of machining and sanding on the back, and that's done. Great cast. Here's a close-up so you can better understand how it was put in the sand or at least how the sand mold was constructed. You can see the three gates off of it so the aluminum would spread out a lot better and not cool off by the time it gets from the center out to the tips of the wings and make a short fill. Since the part was flat on the front, I went ahead and clamped it upside down to mill off the gates. Milling operation just makes it real easy just to take it almost all the way off flat on the back. That way there's not much material left to sand off. The 
pattern's on the top and the casting's on the bottom. And I'm glad I spent as much time as I did preparing the pattern, trying to make it as smooth as possible. Um, it definitely carried the detail over, and it also made it just about as smooth as the paint on the original pattern. I use 190 mesh sand, so it carries over the detail really well. I'll show you the back of it in a second. I normally don't care to clean up the back too much since whatever I do with it, people don't normally see it. But this casting, I'm glad I put those three gates on there. Look how thin that is. Definitely helped the aluminum flow before it solidified up and didn't fill it out. So I think it definitely needed those three gates on it. Thanks again for watching my video. I'd also like to say, I believe I'm going to try some different castings. I'm going to try casting in foam. I want to see how that goes. I haven't tried that before. I've seen a few people do that on YouTube and um, I'll see what happens. The other casting I'd like to try is I'd like to try and cast in lost wax. So I made these little wax skulls, one's out of paraffin, one's out of beeswax. And I think I want to try some lost wax casting and see how that goes. Thanks again. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do so. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.